what you are seeing when I'm casting out that demon that's crawling across the floor. You know, Jesus is the name above all names. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And even demons tremble and obey because they know that Jesus is Lord. But I noticed something happened when I was in the hotel that I was at. There was one day me and Keegan, we were walking through the uh, hallway. And as we were standing there, all of a sudden we hear knock, knock, knock like that. What's up, vlog family? I'm here at the Malahide Castle in Dublin, Ireland. One of the things I love to do when I go into a country is to learn about the history, come see the architecture, and things like that. It gives me a good idea of what I'm coming to deal with and how to deal with it. If you know about a country's history, you know what the people have been you know, suffering with, what they've gone through, and that can go into their generations and stuff like that. So if there's strongholds that need to come down, um, it'll help me with the Holy Spirit to be able to go in and handle business, you know what I mean? Supernaturally, through the power and authority of Jesus Christ. But I want to take you guys on a wonderful, beautiful tour of this castle in this region right here, which is, I think I'm still in Drogheda. I think I am. Or somewhere close by. I'm near Dublin and all that. Stuff. But um, we're going to go out here, have some fun. I'm going to enjoy Kingdom Family. Maybe I'll let you guys meet a few of them. And as usual, you know, we have the usual folks with us. But anyway, subscribe, hit the notification bell, like and share because you care. And enjoy the tour of this castle with me. In Jesus' name. person that said that to you, right? And some people have asked me if we've ever actually stayed here, and the answer is I certainly haven't. I like hearing about this. It makes me want to spend the night. <laughs> I change the atmosphere, you know? Amen. No, I didn't take a picture of his phone. That's the first Recording? Keegan, I noticed you had a little friend in there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what was his name? The Joker. Yeah, the Joker. They said, you know, it's really funny. They said in this house where there's a poltergeist, which means a joking ghost pretty much. A noisy ghost. A noisy ghost. Mm -hmm. It's moving things, closing doors. They catch them in pictures and stuff. I was like, let me stay one night. There's one night in here, and I think we'll change it. But I brought Keegan on here because Keegan is really good at remembering what the guides are saying. <laughs> And uh, I think he has a little history lesson for you guys. What do you want to tell him about, you know, a little bit of the history of this place? Not even this place, but I guess Ireland in general, from what you know. Yeah. We so both have Irish in us. We do. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm Irish. I love it out here. Yeah. We're not related, even though you think we are. We're related in the kingdom. Yes. We have the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, but yes, we're here at the Malahide Castle, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of history here. Um, and it was just really, really interesting because actually throughout our tour, it's crazy because, you know, we carry the supernatural with us wherever we go. And I thought it was interesting that our tour guide was constantly referring to the supernatural. So even at the beginning of the tour, he talked about, you know, the history of religion here and, you know, um, how actually during the reign in the 1600s, it started as early as 1614, um, that it was during King Charles I and then eventually Oliver Cromwell came in and took over and they were were persecuting uh, uh, ca the Catholics, Catholics Catholic yeah. priests, and they were really enforcing pro uh, Protestants. Uh, yeah. Protestants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, they were really enforcing um, people to be Protestants here. And in fact, if you didn't abide by that, if you didn't convert from Catholicism um, to be Protestant, then they actually would take your land from you. They would take your wealth from you. So many people were actually forced to switch to uh, their religion. And so I think it's really interesting because in this castle they showed us where they would have, they, they actually have a tunnel where they would come in and bring Catholic priests and they had, had secret areas where they would hide their, their garments and, you know, rosaries and, you know, all the things that they use um, throughout, you know, 
Catholic tradition and ceremonies. Yeah. And so um, that's one thing that I thought was really interesting that maybe you can touch on is just the principality of religion here yeah. and how there's, we've noticed even last year, like strongholds mm -hmm. uh, with people, you know, um, and like they don't like being, you know, like forced, yeah. uh, you know, like shoving Jesus down your throat, basically. They're like, ah, don't talk to me about Jesus, you know? So you can talk about that. And this is the truth, guys. You know, Christianity is all about loving people. Um, we stand on truth, but we never force truth. We never, like, get aggressive and angry with people because they won't accept what we're saying. We sow seeds. If people catch it, they catch it. If they don't, they don't. So it was actually probably doing the opposite, trying to force things and stuff like that. That's not what we do. So, you know, it, it happens. Um, it happens a lot, as we see today, in all religious circles and stuff. So that's the religious spirit that we don't want. We, You know, God is love. Love isn't tolerance, but also love isn't going to come and, and try to take anybody out either because you're not believing in a certain way, right? We don't live by eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, right? So we live by grace, we, we live by truth, we live by love, we live by mercy, compassion. It says pray for those who do evil to you, pray for those who say bad to you, bad about you. So that's what we do. The history is here, it's not like that now. Um, and we pray that it doesn't get like that no time soon. We know a day is coming where they're going to try to force things and all that. But until then, we're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to see people saved. And that's what we're here to do in Ireland. See people saved, healed, delivered. And for people to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But yeah, I'm going to give it to Keegan. He's going to close it out for you guys. So uh, until the next, what do you say? Until the next scene? Amen. Next scene. Yeah, Amen. until the next scene. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so really quick, guys. One thing, I was talking with our tour guide. Our tour guide is actually, is actually Catholic. And he was saying that before, you know, uh, the reign where the Protestants came in and they were uh, killing people, Oliver Cromwell actually took over 400,000 lives while he was here in Ireland. Um, and he said that before then, they were about 98% Catholic. And then after that reign left, it, it, it ended around the 1970s, they said. Um, and the Church of Ireland still today is actually Protestant. He, however, about 93% about of, of uh, people here uh, in Ireland are still Catholic today. And so he was telling me, you know, like they tried, you know, to force this religion on us, but we're still Catholic. And I think it's really important because we see a lot of people in Ireland are very prideful of their religion, of Catholicism. And it's something that like is an identity with them and like, oh, you know, my grandma and my grandpa were Catholic and my great grandparents were Catholic and, and so on and so forth. And so I think it's really interesting to see how even through all, out throughout all that persecution, you know, still over 90% of the people here are Catholic. Yeah. And it's something that they're very, very prideful about. Um, and so that's another thing, again, that we're trying to break through yeah. here is that religion and to show the love of Jesus, like he was saying. Um, but that's a big reason why I think a lot of people here... Uh, you know, carry on to that religion is because it was it was oppression. It was something that was trying to be taken from them, or they were forced to try and convert. And so I think that's why we see a lot of that today. It's like anything, you know, Catholicism. They got a lot right, meaning they got Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But a lot of the like Mary worship and saint worship and stuff is not is not okay. Um, they do have a lot of core doctrines um, correct, but we want to get them filled with the Holy Spirit. So we'll make them charismatic Catholic, and then we'll let the Holy Spirit do the rest on bringing them out of what they need to because he is the best convictor. Convict them into righteousness, into truth, into holiness and purity, right? So anyway, guys, hope you lo love this little history lesson. Comment, what do you guys think about this? You know, what do you think about what we've said? We want to talk to you in the comment section, or we just want to see what you have to say. You know, We do read them, believe it or not. So let us know what you think about this, and see you on the next scene. In Jesus' name. All right, guys, going in, eat some good Irish food, I think, I hope. Come on. Oh. All right, guys, going in, I'm in Ireland about to eat some Italian food. Amen. One, two, three, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
Men of God, what are we doing? Well, we're down here in uh, where it's part, I guess you could call this the cliffs. And uh, it's a beautiful view, I'm just taking it in. So, you know, the Bible tells us as, as the waters cover the sea, mm. so shall the glory of God cover the earth. Mm. The way that happens is through me and through you. So spread the good news of Jesus Christ and watch his glory cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Where we at, bro? We are in Ireland, Dublin, at the cliffs. Damn. Now, the cliffs are very magnificent. The weather is spicy cold, but it's working, you know? You were led by the Spirit. vlog family just got done with revival in Ireland and my goodness did Jesus have his way I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about something do you remember when I was in the castle and they were talking about there was a little ghost guy that was running around and stuff the little jester or whatever and they see him here and there you know Ireland is steeped in superstition and things of that nature you know good luck four-leaf clovers you name it, they got it going on, right? I think there's even uh, a bunch of druid stuff. There's all kinds of stuff that goes on. But I noticed something happened when I was in the hotel that I was at. There was one day me and Keegan, we were walking through the uh, hallway. And as we were standing there, all of a sudden we hear knock, knock, knock like that. And there was like 40 people in the hotel all together. So like, they were all spread out. And where we, where we were, nobody was there. So I'm sitting here like, did I just hear that? And Keegan's like, yeah, you just heard that. I looked to my right and it came from a hallway nobody was in and it was just an exit door. So I was like, okay. I went up, lift the sign up and the sign says that this door should not be open. So I know nobody was on the other side of the door. I even knocked on the door to see if I could get a knock back and there was no knock back. So immediately I said, no, not today, Satan. So we started praying. And as we started praying, I felt these incredible chills just start going through my body, which is usually a confirmation that there was something going on. So we just pray. We ask the Lord to dispatch angels and everything and nothing else happened after that. So, you know, the devil likes to try to intimidate you, try to put fear in you. Obviously, the old me growing up, I had all that kind of stuff happen to me all the time. So when I experience something like that now, I'm just kind of like, uh, whatever. And I just pray and I use the authority Jesus Christ has given me. But you know why places like that become haunted and stuff? Haunted, not really demonized, right? Is because of things that happen on the land or the power that people's mouths are giving the demonic realm in that area. You know, a lot of people are walking around in ignorance and they're not walking around in the authority that Christ has given them or understanding the authority Christ has given them. And I mean, if they're not a believer, obviously they're not going to understand that authority. But a lot of Christians don't even understand that they can use the power and authority found in the name of Jesus Christ and just move things out of the way, move demonic powers, remove them demonic atmospheres because of the power that is found in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, we are atmosphere changers, so it doesn't matter if we go in the most haunted place in the whole world, we carry the King of glory. We carry the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I think it's pretty powerful, don't you? I mean, I think if we're carrying that much power, then demonic powers don't stand a chance. So. Anyway, that was interesting. You know, I hadn't had anything like that happen to me in a long time. And I thought this would be a good little uh, teaching moment for you guys so that if you come across anything haunted, you'll know that you can use that power and authority in Jesus' name to push back whatever it is. You know that same authority I was talking to you guys about that I had with 
you know, that moment where I heard the knocking in the hotel and stuff, that same power and authority is what you were seeing when I'm casting out that demon that's crawling across the floor. You know, Jesus is the name above all names. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And even demons tremble and obey because they know that Jesus is Lord. So you're seeing that same power, that same authority that you read in the Bible in action through my life. And anybody who believes in Jesus Christ that has given him their full commitment and is filled with his spirit, has that authority to do the same thing. So guys, make sure that you're using your authority in Christ to kick the devil's butt. We need the devil to be pushed back in all sorts of ways so that people can walk out their God-given destiny here on this earth. God bless you. Look, if this is your first time watching, I want you to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like and share because you care. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you on the next vlog.